I've installed Windows 10 on thousands of different computers and in this video I'll be showing you my go-to method for installing Windows 10 from a USB flash drive in this ultimate step-by-step -step guide. I've made this guide beginner friendly so that anyone would be able to install Windows 10 regardless of their computer knowledge. With that being said, computers sometimes have a mind of their own and things don't work as expected. That's why I'll also be mentioning alternative methods throughout each section of this video, just in case my go-to method doesn't work for you for whatever reason. You're gonna need a blank or formatable USB flash drive that's at least 8 gigs in size, a working computer to create the Windows 10 bootable flash drive, and Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a bootable USB flash drive with the Windows 10 ISO file on it. So to do that, I'm going to come over to Google and then do a search for download Windows 10. And if I go ahead and do that Google search, I'll find this Microsoft website, which will take me to the Windows 10 downloads page. And this is what the page will look like. Now from this web page, there's no option to just select the Windows 10 ISO file and download it. You have to use the Windows 10 media creation tool. And a lot of people have some issues with that. So what you can do in that case is make sure that you're using Google Chrome. And then what you need to do is press F12 on your keyboard, which will open the developer tools like you see here. Then inside of the developer tools here at the top, you're going to see these three dots next to the settings icon. Click on those three dots, then go to more tools, and then you want to find network conditions. Click on that, and it's going to open the network conditions at the bottom here. What you want to have a look for here is inside of this network conditions tab, you're going to see this user agent section. You can uncheck that box, and then you need to click on this drop down menu and you need to change it from custom to BlackBerry BB10 and then you can go ahead and click on reload up here to reload the web page and once you've done that you can just close the network conditions here at the right and if you now scroll down on this page you'll see that you have the option to download the latest Windows 10 ISO file and you can go ahead and click on this drop down to select the Windows 10 multi-edition ISO then click on confirm then you'll just need to choose your language. Now I normally select English US, so I'm going to select English United States, but you can also use English International or any of these other languages. I'm going to select English US and then click on confirm. And then next you'll need to choose between 32-bit and 64-bit. Now most people will be using 64-bit, so don't even bother with 32-bit, just use 64-bit. So click on 64-bit download and then that's going to start downloading the ISO file. Now, if you weren't able to download the ISO file using this method in Google Chrome, I'll show you in Microsoft Edge as well. Once again, in the browser, press F12 on your keyboard. Then you're going to have these three dots here. Click on that, then go to more tools, network conditions. Then at the bottom here, you can drag this to make it bigger. Uncheck the box that says use browser default. And then you can click on the drop down menu and then change it to BlackBerry BB10. Or you can even change it to Chrome OS if you want. And then just reload the web page. And then you can close the network conditions or developer tools. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to go through the exact same process to download this Windows 10 ISO file. But I'm going to close Microsoft Edge because I already have the ISO file downloading inside of Google Chrome. And this isn't the only way to download the Windows 10 ISO file. You can also use the media creation tool provided by Microsoft, or you can use another program called Rufus to create the Windows 10 flash drive and download the Windows 10 ISO file. And I've created separate videos on how to do that if this method doesn't work for you and I'll link them down in the description of the video and in my written guide on my website. So the next thing we can do while we wait for this ISO file to download is we can go back to Google. We can do a Google search for Ventoy GitHub. Go ahead and do that Google search and then you should get this result which is Ventoy on GitHub. Go ahead and click on that link. And then once you're on this GitHub page, here on the right, you can scroll down. Then you can click on the releases tab here on the right. And you'll be taken to the latest release. And then just scroll down until you find the Ventoy for Windows zip file. Go ahead and click on that to download it. And it should start that download. Once it's finished, just click on the folder to show it in your downloads folder. And once you have it in your downloads folder, 
just select it once, then right click on it. And while holding down right click, just drag it to an empty space in the folder. Let go of right click, then click on extract, then click on extract again. And it's going to extract the Ventoy files to your computer. And it should automatically open the next folder. And you can go ahead and open that. And then you're going to find all of these files. Now here, you want to click on Ventoy to disk, double click on that to run it. Now at this point, you want to connect your USB flash drive to the computer. As you can see, I've already connected my USB flash drive, which is a 16 gig SanDisk flash drive. So here you need to go ahead and connect your flash drive to the computer. And if it's not detected yet in Ventoy, you can just click on this button here to refresh it and it should then detect your flash drive. So once you're at this point, you can go ahead and click on install, and then you're gonna get this message that says your USB flash drive will be formatted and the data will be lost. If you're fine with that, just go ahead and click on yes, and then you'll get the same warning again. Once again, if you're fine with that, just click on yes, and it's then gonna format the flash drive and install Ventoy onto the flash drive. And the reason I'm using Ventoy in this guide is it can boot on both older hardware and newer hardware, but I'll explain that in more detail later on in this guide. So once it's finished, you're gonna see this message that says the Ventoy has been successfully installed. Then you can just go ahead and click on okay, and then you can close Ventoy. So once you're done with that and your flash drive has now been formatted and labeled Ventoy, you can go to your downloads folder or wherever you have the Windows Windows 10 ISO file saved, you can go ahead and select it, then right click on it, click on copy, then go to your flash drive, your Ventoy flash drive, and then just right click inside of it and click on paste. So you can copy and paste the Windows 10 ISO file onto the Ventoy flash drive. Once you have this Windows 10 ISO file copied to your Ventoy bootable flash drive, you're almost ready to boot up and start installing Windows 10. But before we do that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to identify the installation drive. So if I go to this PC, you'll see that I have a bunch of drives here. Now, if you only have one drive connected to your computer, you can basically skip this step because you won't need to differentiate between different drives in your computer. And if you do have more than one drive connected to your computer, the best thing would be to shut down your computer and disconnect all the drives that you have connected to your computer and only connect the drive that you want to install Windows on. But if that's not possible for you, the next best thing that you can do is identify the drive or partition that you want to install Windows on. So to do that, we can do a search and then we can type disk management, which will give you this result to create and format hard disk partitions. And here we can see all of the disks that we have connected to our computer. So I've got three disks connected to my computer at the moment. Disk zero is where I have Windows installed which is the Windows that I'm currently using. That one is 120 gigs. Then I've got another disk, which has all of these partitions on it. And I wanna install Windows on this disk. And then lastly, I have this USB flash drive, which is removable and it's labeled a Ventoy. I'm going to leave all of these drives connected. And during the Windows installation process, I'll be installing Windows on disk one. And to make it easier for me to identify this disk during the Windows installation, I'm going to rename one of these partitions and I'm going to rename this Windows 11 partition. I'm going to right click on it, then click on properties, which will bring up this properties window. And then I'm going to change this Windows 11 label to delete me then click on apply and okay so during the windows installation process i'll see this delete me partition and then i'll also see which disk it is and then we can delete all of the partitions off of that disk so now we're ready to shut down the computer and then boot from the windows 10 installation media so in my case, I'm going to be installing Windows 10 on the same computer that I'm using here. But if you're installing Windows 10 on a different computer, then you can go ahead and connect your Ventoy flash drive to that computer. Now you're going to need to boot from the flash drive and the boot menu key on the keyboard is different for different computer manufacturers. But I'm going to put something up on the screen now that'll show you all of the most common boot menu keys. If you find that you're not able to access the boot menu, go ahead and do a Google search for your specific motherboard or computer model to find out what the boot menu key is. Once you've pressed it, you're gonna get to a screen that looks similar to this, where you can select the boot device. And now you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate this menu. And the first thing that I need to explain to you here is once you've identified your USB flash drive from this list, you're gonna see that you have two boot options. 
as you can see here, I've got this SanDisk boot option. And then right below it, I've got this UEFI SanDisk boot option. Now, this is what Ventoy does, is it allows you to choose between legacy boot mode or UEFI boot mode. Now, without getting too technical about this, the old standard was called Legacy BIOS or CSM BIOS, and the new standard is called UEFI. And to make it as simple as possible, basically, if your computer has hardware from before 2012, if you have a really old computer, you're going to be using the Legacy boot option, which is the one that doesn't have UEFI next to it. And if you have a newer computer, basically anything after 2012, you're going to have this UEFI boot option. Now, the one that you should choose if you have it is the UEFI boot option. But if you don't have it available, then you can just use the normal legacy boot option. So for this guide, because I have the UEFI boot option, I'm going to select it. So I'll navigate to it with the arrow keys and then press enter on the keyboard. Now, right there, you should have seen that it said secure boot disabled. And that's because I have secure boot disabled on this motherboard. Chances are you might be seeing a screen that looks like this, where it says there was a security violation. And if you see that screen, just follow the steps that you see on screen now, which is going to show you how to add Ventoy to the secure boot menu. But once you've successfully booted from the flash drive, you're going to see this Ventoy screen and you'll have this Windows 10 ISO file that you can boot from. You can press enter on your keyboard and then you can press enter again to boot in normal mode. Then you'll see this message that you need to press any key to boot from the ISO file. Just go ahead and press spacebar on the keyboard and eventually it's going to boot up into this Windows setup screen. And once you get to this screen, you can change your time and currency format to wherever you live. For this video, I'll just leave United States selected, then click on next and then click on install now. Next, you're going to get to this screen that says activate Windows and you don't have to enter a product key right away. But at the end of this video, I'll show you how to activate Windows legally as well. But for now, just click on I don't have a product key and then you'll be able to choose between all of these versions to install. Now in this video, I'm going to install Windows 10 Pro, but if you want to install any of the other versions, if you already have a product key, you can choose the version for which you already have a product key, or if you enter the product key in the previous screen, it'll automatically select the version for that product key. And if you get to this screen where you need to select a version of Windows 10, you always need to select a version without the N. So I'm going to go ahead and select Windows 10 Pro, then click on next, then click on this checkbox to accept the terms. Click on next and once you get to this screen you want to click on custom install windows only and then you're going to need to choose where you want to install windows now if you get to this screen and you're not able to select any drive or you get a message saying that you need to load a driver to install windows i'm going to link another video in the cards now and i'll link it in the description of this video that'll show you how to fix the no drives detected error during the windows installation but to continue with the guide, once you get to the screen, you'll see that the drives has numbers. As you can see here, I've got drive zero and then I've got drive one as well. So if I scroll down on this list, here you can see that I have this delete me partition that I renamed earlier. So that tells me that drive one is the drive where I want to install Windows on and not drive zero like I see it up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of the partitions on drive one and I'm going to start from bottom to top. So this is unallocated space on drive one. So I'll go to the next partition, which is partition three and then click on delete. Now, remember, if you delete the partition, any data on it will be lost. So if you're fine with that, go ahead and click on OK. So it's deleted that partition. Now I'll just scroll down again and select the other partitions on drive one and then click on delete. Once again, select the other partition. So you just want to delete all of the partitions on that drive until the drive only has unallocated space left like you see here. So all of drive zero's partitions will still be kept, but drive one, which is where I want to install Windows, all of the partitions are deleted on it and it only has unallocated space. So I'm going to select drive one and then click on next and then it's going to start installing Windows onto that drive. And now you'll just need to have some patience. If you're installing Windows 10 on a hard drive, it's going to take quite some time. 
Whereas if you're installing it on an SSD, it's going to be much faster. But now you can just wait for this process to finish. And one thing that you can do while it's installing Windows here is if you're installing Windows on a desktop computer and you have the Ethernet or LAN cable, the cable that supplies internet to the computer connected, go ahead and unplug that right now. Otherwise, it's just going to make the initial setup steps of Windows 10 a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And if you're installing Windows 10 on a laptop, once we get to the Windows 10 setup screen, I'll show you how you can bypass connecting to the internet. So once it's finished installing, you're going to see the screen that says Windows needs to restart to continue and it'll restart in 10 seconds. Once it restarts, you need to unplug the USB flash drive from your computer. And the reason you need to unplug it is the computer might boot from the flash drive again and then you'll be stuck in this loop booting from the ISO file instead of it booting from the drive that you installed Windows to. So as you can see, my computer is now busy booting from the drive that I just installed Windows 10 to and it's getting ready, busy installing all of the necessary drivers and components so we can start using Windows 10 on this computer. So once Windows 10 is finished installing, this is the first screen that you'll be seeing and you need to select your region. I'm going to leave United States selected, then click on yes. Then you need to choose your keyboard layout. Again, I'll leave it on United States and then click on yes. And then you can choose to add a second keyboard layout if you do use one. For most people, you'll just need to click on skip for this. And now you'll be prompted to connect to a network. And like I said, if you have a laptop or you have Wi-Fi on your computer, you'll also see your Wi-Fi networks listed here. Now you don't need to go ahead and connect to any of them. You can just click on this button down here that says I don't have internet. Go ahead and click on that and then click on continue with limited setup unless you want to set up your computer with a Microsoft account. Then you'll need to connect to the internet and then click on connect now to set up with a Microsoft account. I don't recommend doing this ever. I always create a local account. So that's why I'll go ahead and click on continue with limited setup. And then next you'll need to select a username. So I'll just call my user profile memory, then click on next. And then you can create a password if you want. If you don't want to use a password, you can just leave it blank and then click on next. Then you'll be able to choose some privacy settings for your device. I always turn all of these sliders off. So just go ahead and disable all of these sliders. Click on accept. If you want to use Cortana, you can click on accept. I don't want to use Cortana, so I'll just click on not now. And after all of those messages, eventually you should be seeing a screen that looks like this. And this is your Windows 10 desktop screen. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the guide, congratulations, you've successfully installed Windows 10 on your computer, but we're not done yet. We still need to install the latest Windows 10 updates and drivers. And then we're also going to install some very basic but needed software for Windows 10 to make it a lot more user friendly. But don't worry, I'm going to take you through all of that step by step. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you want to connect to the internet. So you can go ahead and plug in your ethernet cable or if you're using wi-fi you can go ahead and connect to your wi-fi network so you can get internet i've just plugged in my ethernet cable and it's detected my network so you can go ahead and click on yes and now that we're connected to the internet the first thing we can go and do is we can click on the start button then we can go to settings and then we can go and scroll down to update and security and then we can start checking for updates as you can see my computer is already checking for updates but if yours didn't start automatically you can just go ahead and click on the button that says check for updates so while that's running in the background the next thing that i like to do is i just like to clean up the taskbar down here so i'll just right click and change the search to the icon only and then i'll right click and hide the task view button and then i also remove the microsoft store and mail from the taskbar these are all personal preference so you don't have to do that i'm just showing you what i normally do on a new install of windows 10 and then i also right click down here on the taskbar and change the news and interests and turn it off and then i also hide this meet now button and then the next thing that you can check is if you right click on your start button and you click on device manager you should have a bunch of missing drivers like me for instance i've got a missing pci driver and hopefully i'll be able to install that driver via windows update so once we're done with all of the windows updates we'll come back to the device manager just to check that we have all of the necessary drivers installed but for now, I'm going to install some default programs on Windows. And once again, this is all personal preference. This is what I normally install for my clients just to get them up and running so that they'll be able to open the most common file types on their computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch Microsoft Edge. Then I'm just going to skip this setup. And then the first website I'm going to go to is ninite.com. 
And if you don't know about this website, we're going to be able to install and update all of our programs at once, all of the ones that we select down here. So you can go ahead and select whatever you're going to use on your computer, but I'll just show you what I normally install. So I normally select Google Chrome, then for an image viewer, I use FastStone Image Viewer. I also install the free version of Malwarebytes. I use 7-Zip as file extraction software. And then for media, I use iTunes as a music player. And then I also choose the VLC and Klight Codex, although they basically do the same thing. But I usually install both of them to watch videos with. I never choose any one of these document viewers because I'm going to use some other programs for that. And then in the utilities, Sometimes I install OpenShell, but I'm not going to be using it in this video. So once you've selected all of the apps that you want to install on your computer, you can click on get your Ninite. It's then going to download this package. And if you click on open file, it's going to start the setup and you might get this user account control prompt. Just click on yes. And then if you click on show details, you'll be able to see all of the programs downloading and then installing. So the next thing I want to quickly do is do a search for control panel, then open the control panel, and then I'll just change the view by setting to small icons. And I normally pin the control panel to the taskbar, then the user account control. I normally disable that completely. If you're not computer savvy, I don't recommend switching this off because this can actually also protect you from threats on your computer. But if you're computer savvy and you know what you're doing, sometimes these pop-ups just get in the way of what you actually want to do. So I'm just going to switch that off, then click on OK. And I'll have to click yes once again. Then I'm going to go back to the control panel. And for the power options, I have some additional plans here, like the high performance plan. So I'm going to activate that and then change the plan settings. And then I'll set this setting to never so my computer doesn't switch off automatically. And if you don't see these plans on your computer, I'll link some guides in the description of the video that will show you how to get the high performance plan and the ultimate performance plan. But that's all I want to do in the control panel. So I'll just exit out of that. And then Ninite is still busy installing all of these apps. So while that's busy, I'm just going to go to Google and then I'm going to do a search for AnyDesk because that's another program that I normally use on the computer for remote desktop connection. So I'll just click on download now. Once it's finished, just click on open file to install it. Click on install AnyDesk and then I just uncheck this install AnyDesk printer option right here. Click on accept and install. And then we have AnyDesk installed. The next app that I need to manually download is Adobe Reader for PDFs. So I'll go to the official website for that. And then if you do download this, just make sure you uncheck this box to also install McAfee Security Scan Plus. Then download Adobe Acrobat Reader. That's going to download the installation file for that. And you can just click on open file so it can start downloading and installing Adobe Reader. And then while that's busy, I'll just go back to Google. Just minimize that and then I'll do a search for only office desktop editors. And this is basically a free office suite for Windows. So if you don't have Microsoft Office, this currently is the best free desktop office suite that you can get. So I'll just go to the download now page and then I'll download the MSI installer for Windows. And if you go back to the Ninite app, it looks like the iTunes installation failed, but it's busy installing malware bytes. Normally, all of these apps will install perfectly fine. So once Ninite is finished installing, you'll see that you have this option to retry or reinstall if one of the installs failed. So I'm just going to click on that button and then we'll see if it can install iTunes again. But it's currently waiting for another installation to finish, which is probably this Adobe Acrobat Reader installation so let's just wait for that to finish and we just installed itunes with the microsoft store as well i'm just going to uncheck this box then click on finish it seems nanite has found the itunes installation package so let's just wait for it to finish installing and once it's completely finished you'll see that all of these apps have been installed so once that's done let's just go to the downloads folder so we can install only office desktop editors that's one of the things we haven't installed yet and it's the last thing that we need to install with regards to the programs and the installation is straightforward you just click on next accept the terms and then click on next click on select all click on next again and then on install that's going to install that to your computer and while that's busy i'm just going to open a file explorer window and then i'll click on this this PC icon here and then click and drag it over to the desktop to create a shortcut and then I normally pin this shortcut to the taskbar so I can get to this PC easier. I'm not going to launch only office now I'll just uncheck this box and then click on finish 
and you can leave this PC shortcut on your desktop if you want, or you can delete it. It's totally up to you. But what we need to do with some of these programs is for fast stone, you can double click on it to open it. Then you can click on settings, click on settings once again, then just change this drop down from full screen to windowed mode, then click on OK and close it. For malware bytes, you need to open it and convert the free trial version to the free version. So just click on get started. As you can see, I have the premium trial, which expires in 14 days. I'm just going to click on this profile icon up here, then click on my subscription and then deactivate the trial and click on yes and then close that window. So now we have Malwarebytes free and you can open this up on your computer and do a scan every once in a while to keep your computer clean of any threats. And in conjunction with Malwarebytes, you'll be using Windows Defender, which you can also open and just check that all of these things are working properly. Next, we can open Adobe Reader. Once it's open, you should get this pop-up that asks you if you want to make Adobe Reader your default PDF application. Go ahead and click on Yes. You'll see this pop-up. Click on Adobe Acrobat, then click on OK. And then Adobe Reader will be your default PDF viewer because Microsoft likes to change that to Microsoft Edge through Windows Update and it just doesn't work very well. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and close Adobe Reader. And then if we go back to the Windows Update, you should now have a list of Windows updates that's busy downloading and installing. It seems that my Windows Update is frozen, so I'm just gonna close the down the settings, then go back and reopen settings and navigate back to update and security. And then we'll see all of these updates that are pending installation. So just go ahead and click on install now. And if you also have these optional updates, just go ahead and click on download and install. And then if you see this message that says view optional updates, go ahead and click on it and then expand the section that says driver updates. And then you want to select all of these checkboxes that you have available on your computer, because these are actually the drivers that Windows Update detected that's needed for your system to perform optimally. And in some cases, these aren't the latest available drivers, but it's still perfectly fine to install this. So you at least have some driver installed for the hardware that you have in your computer. So just go ahead and select all of them and then click on download and install. And then if you get this message that says, get ready for Windows 11, if you don't wanna to upgrade to Windows 11, just go ahead and close it with this X here. But once you've done that, you can close settings and then we can go ahead and we can reopen it once again. And now I'm going to take you through some settings that you need to change on Windows 10 after you installed it for the first time. So on this message here, I'll just click on skip for now. And then I'll go to system, notifications and actions. And then I normally turn off all the notifications in Windows 10. And I disable the slider here. Then I go to tablet. I change this drop down to never use tablet mode and don't switch to tablet mode. Then you can go back to home. Then you can go to apps, default apps. Then you can select your default apps that you want to use on your computer. For the music player, I'm just going to change this to iTunes. The photo viewer, I'll change to fast stone. And then the video player, I'll leave that on media player classic, but you can also change this to VLC media player if you prefer using that. I'm going to change that to Google Chrome, but you can use whatever you want. Just click on switch anyway. So it switches from Microsoft Edge. Then next, I'll click on offline maps, delete all maps. Make sure that both of these sliders are turned off. Go to apps for websites, disable any sliders that you see there, go to startup, and then you want to disable any startup items that you're not going to use. So I'll disable Microsoft OneDrive. I'll leave all of these Nvidia ones checked, which is needed for my graphics card. And then I'll just make sure all of these iTunes sliders are turned off as well. Normally you'll see a Microsoft Edge slider here as well. You can also go ahead and turn that off. And as you can see, my graphics driver just got installed through Windows Update. That's why everything looks different. But for the recording, I'm just going to go ahead and change the scale so everything isn't as small. I'll just change this to 150. And let's go back to where we left off. By the startup apps, like I was mentioning before, normally you see a Microsoft Edge here as well. And you can go ahead and turn off that slider as well. Next, click on accounts, then go to sign in options, and then you just want to uncheck this slider. So Windows doesn't automatically load programs that were open on the computer before restarting it. Next, you can go to gaming and then you can disable the Xbox game bar here if you're not going to use it. Normally, I leave game mode on, but you can disable that as well if you want. Next, go to privacy. And this is probably the most important part of these settings. You want to go ahead and uncheck all of these sliders here in general for speech as well. You want to click on that and disable any sliders that you see there as well as inking and typing and the diagnostics change this to required diagnostics and make sure all of these sliders are turned off and click on delete 
I'll just need to change the display settings once again because the display driver probably just finished installing now. So once again, go back to privacy, make sure all of these sliders are turned off in the diagnostics and feedback, and then the feedback frequency, change that to never, and go to the activity history, and then you can leave this first box checked, but you need to uncheck this box that says send my activity history to Microsoft. And then you can just click on clear as well and click on OK. Next, scroll down to notifications, change this and switch it off and then go to background apps. Disable all of these background apps that just runs on your computer and takes a lot of the processing power away. Click on app diagnostics change that, switch it off. And then that's basically it for this section. Then you can go to update and security. And this is where we're busy with Windows update. As you can see, all of these are pending restart, but we still have one update that's busy downloading. So we'll wait for that to finish. But in the meantime, you can click on delivery optimization here, and then you can just uncheck this slider to allow downloads from other PCs. Now, once you've done that, you can click on activation here and this is where you can check if your copy of windows is activated now as you can see here my windows is activated with a digital license and that's because this computer that i reinstalled windows on was previously activated with windows 10 pro and it automatically got the digital license from my motherboard so if your copy of windows is unactivated i'm going to link a video in the cards now and in the description of this video that's going to show you how you can activate windows 10 legally and you can go ahead and follow that guide to get rid of the activate windows watermark on your desktop which will eventually appear here in the bottom right so i'm going to go back to windows update because this is the last thing that we're waiting for now and i just need to wait for this update to finish installing but i'll probably speed this up in the video so once all of the available updates has finished downloading and installing the status should change to pending restart so just go ahead and click on restart now to restart your computer so it can finish installing all of the updates that are just downloaded now and once again i'll speed this up for the video but you will need to have some patience because it can take quite some time installing all of these updates and necessary drivers for your computer Once your computer has finished restarting from the updates, you might get some messages like I have here. And this is the setup of a driver that just finished installing. So I'll just click on OK and then it's going to close the setup. But you might get even more or you might get none of them. Doesn't really matter. If you do get any of them, just click on OK or Next or whatever you need to do. So Windows Update changed the search bar once again. So I'm just going to right click on it and then change the search to the icon only because I don't like search taking up that much space on the taskbar. And then I'm also just going to pin Google Chrome to the taskbar and put it next to Microsoft Edge. So now what we can do is we can go back to Windows Update by going to the settings then clicking on update and security. And then in this latest version of Windows 10, you'll have the slider to get the latest updates as soon as they're available. If you want, you can go ahead and enable the slider and then check for updates again and install any additional updates that you might have. But one thing that I want to have a look at now is if we right click on the start button, and go to device manager, your device manager should look like you see it here where you don't have any yellow exclamation marks next to any of these items. And also if you expand the display adapters, the driver listed below the display adapters shouldn't be the Microsoft basic display adapter. It should be either an Intel, Nvidia or AMD driver, depending on what hardware you have. And the driver that I have here was installed by Windows Update. Now for the display driver specifically, I recommend installing the latest version available from the manufacturer's website. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link all of my display driver tutorials in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and follow that depending on what hardware you have. And also if you do have any yellow exclamation marks next to any of these items after running all of the Windows updates that you have available and restarting your computer, then you can also go ahead and watch my tutorial on how to install drivers on Windows 10 and 11 because in that video I show you step by step how you can identify missing drivers and then also install them so you can get your device manager looking like this. But this is the basic setup that I do on every Windows 10 installation. In the event 
that you haven't turned off your computer and connected any additional drives. If you do have any additional drives, you can go ahead and shut down your computer and then connect any additional drives that you might have. But this is basically it for my ultimate guide on how to install Windows 10 on your computer. And I would love to hear from you guys if it was helpful in the comments. So please go ahead and leave a comment saying if this was helpful to you and if you managed to install Windows 10 on your computer. And if you're planning to play games on your computer or you just want to get the best performance out of Windows 10, you can go ahead and watch the video that I link on screen now and that's going to take you through my step-by-step -step guide on how I optimize Windows 10 for gaming.